Hi, Chad with Versamatic. Today we're going to install an airing kit into our E1 plastic non-metallic center pump. Today on the bench we have an E1 plastic non-metallic center pump with our Versamatic genuine parts, a wet end kit, and an airing kit. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man, method, and machine, but for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you have completed any part of the process. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in a process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and airing kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. For somatic genuine replacement parts, wet end and airing kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Versamatic recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals and more information, visit us on the web at www.versamatic.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rump video on safety at versamatic.com. Today our airside rebuild will include the following. Gasket, O-rings, U-cup seals, and inserts. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Torque wrench, ratchet, small slotted screwdriver, O-ring pick, Phillips head screwdriver, sockets and or wrenches, 1 half inch, 7 eighths inch, 5 thirty seconds inch socket head allen wrench. Alright, let's get started. Today we're going to use a 3 8 drive impact gun for ease of disassembly and reassembly. Now set aside the discharge manifold for later rebuild. Now remove the main air valve. Set aside the main air valve for later rebuild. Now remove the suction manifold. Set aside the suction manifold for later rebuild. Now remove one outer chamber. Set aside our outer chamber for later rebuild. Now remove one diaphragm assembly. Set aside our outer plate. Remove the diaphragm. Remove the inner plate. Remove the opposite outer chamber and set aside for later rebuild. Now remove the second diaphragm assembly with the diaphragm rod. Now remove the Phillips head screws that hold in the valve retainer plate. Set aside the valve retainer plate for later rebuild. Now remove the main shaft o-ring. Now remove the bumper o-ring on one end of the pilot spool. 
This will allow us to remove the pilot spool from the pilot sleeve. Remove pilot spool from pilot sleeve and set aside. Now remove the second valve retainer plate and remove the main shaft o-ring. Now remove the pilot sleeve. This can be pressed out using a socket, nut driver, or any tool that won't damage the pilot sleeve or center section of the pump. Pull the pilot sleeve out from the opposite side. Now we're ready to install our air in kit. Inspect our center section. For any sharp edges, inspect the radius and replace as needed. Now remove the pilot sleeve o-rings. Inspect the pilot sleeve for any scarring, scratching, or damage and replace as needed. Now we're ready to install our pilot sleeve o-rings. Be sure to install the o-rings into each of the designated o-ring grooves. Apply light grease to the pilot sleeve o-rings. Grease is applied to keep the items from catching, binding, or cutting while assembling components. We also want to apply a light grease to the pilot sleeve bore. Gently press in the pilot sleeve and bring the pilot sleeve flush to the center section of the pump. Apply grease to the location of the main shaft o-ring. Repeat this process for the opposite side. Now install our main shaft o-ring. and apply a light grease to the o-ring itself. Repeat this process for the opposite side. Now we'll install our valve retainer plate. Install the Phillips head screws that hold the valve retainer plate in. There is no torque value for these Phillips head screws. Repeat this process on the opposite side. Now remove the old o-rings on the pilot spool. Inspect our pilot spool for any scarring, scratching, or damage and replace as needed. We're ready to install our pilot spool o-rings. Start from one end and work your way down. Be sure to leave off one bumper o-ring Apply light grease to these o-rings. The end missing the bumper o-ring will be installed first. Gently press in the spool without damaging, rolling, nicking any of the pilot spool o-rings. Now we're ready to install our bumper o-ring on the opposite side. Now we're ready to rebuild our main air valve. We're going to start off by removing the retaining clip. Remove the end cap. Now push the spool out the opposite end so we can remove the end cap sleeve. 
Now remove the U-cup seals from the air valve spool. Now we're ready to install our U-cup seals with the U-cup portion facing inward on the main spool. Be sure to install the U-cup seal facing inward on the air valve spool. Repeat this process for the smaller end of the main air valve spool. Now remove the old O-rings from the end cap sleeve. Inspect the end cap sleeve for any damage and replace as needed. Now install the new O-rings into the designated O-ring groove. Remove the old O-ring on the end cap. Inspect the end cap for any damage. Install the new O-ring into the designated O-ring groove. Inspect the main air valve body for any scarring or scratching or damage. Inspect the integrity of the casting and replace as needed. Apply light grease to the bore of the main air valve body. This will help ensure that we don't damage, roll, or nick any of the U-cup seals or O-rings. Apply light grease to the end cap sleeve O-rings. Gently press in the end cap sleeve into the main air valve body, bringing it flush to the end of the main air valve body. Apply a light grease to our other end cap O-ring. And apply a light grease to the main air valve U-cup seals. Install the small end first into the main air valve body. Compress the U-cup seal on the larger end of the main air valve spool. Now install the end cap. Be sure to bring the end cap flush to the end of the main air valve body. This will help ensure that our retaining clips will be fully seated and flush with the air valve body. Be sure that retaining clip is fully seated. Be sure the main air valve spool moves freely within the air valve body. Now we're ready to install our air diverter. The cut portion of the air diverter will face towards the valve insert. And then install our main air valve gasket. Be sure all bolt holes and pilot holes align with the main air valve body. Apply light grease to the main shaft so we don't damage the main shaft o-ring upon installation. Now inspect the outer chamber, inspect the integrity of the casting, the radius that the diaphragm rolls across. You can dress up these edges with a light sandpaper, crocus cloth, or emery cloth. Inspect the ball cages on the suction side for any sharp edges and lightly sand. Chamber orientation requires the discharge side of the chamber to be installed in the same direction as the air valve face on the center block. When tightening down the outer chamber bolts, tighten in a cross pattern and torque to factory specs. Now we're ready to install our opposite diaphragm assembly. Note the orientation of the diaphragm and the part numbers on the diaphragm. Inspect the radius of the outer diaphragm plate. Inspect the integrity of the outer diaphragm plate. On this particular pump, the natural bulge is in on the diaphragm. Inspect the inner diaphragm plate. 
Note the orientation of the inner diaphragm plate with the radius facing towards the diaphragm. Begin to hand tighten the diaphragm assembly to the main shaft and torque to factory specification. If you achieve torque and the bolt holes on the diaphragm do not align with the center section of the pump, always go forward and never back off. Be sure all bolt holes align. Inspect the outer chamber for casting integrity. Inspect the machine surfaces and radius of the chamber for damage or material buildup. Note the orientation of the outer chamber on the opposite side in relation to the center section of the pump. Be sure to torque the outer chamber bolts to factory specifications in a cross pattern. We want to inspect the manifold for scarring, damage, or material buildup. Check the casting for wear. Check the port for thread integrity. Repair or replace as needed. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. When tightening the suction manifold, be sure to tighten the bolts in a cross pattern and torque to factory specifications. Now we're ready to install our main air valve assembly. Be sure the bolt holes and piloting holes all align with the center section of the pump. When tightening the main air valve to the center section of the pump, be sure to torque to factory specs in the cross pattern. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Now tighten down our discharge manifold. Be sure to bring the bolts down snug and torque in a cross pattern according to factory specifications. This concludes our air end rebuild. When doing a complete rebuild, see our wet side rebuild. Or for additional information, find us on the web at versamatic.com or contact after sales support at service.versamatic at idexcorp.com. Thank you.